What's up y'all, it's CJ, and we are here for another episode review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. This was a really, really good episode because we got, you know, the, the moms involved. And when I say moms, I mean Miss Wanda, Miss Van, and Mama Hope. Like all of them were involved in this episode. So I'm really excited to talk about it. But before we discuss anything, y'all go ahead and make sure to tap that like button and also subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, we need to get more subscribers, you know, grow our family a little bit. Um, I'm, I'm back at it like I've mentioned in the other two videos that I have posted this week. I have been out of it for a minute, but I'm back and hopefully better and we are gonna get this thing, you know, moving in the right direction. But this was season three, episode 15, and they called this episode Wrecking Ball Wanda, and we all know why. But the episode starts with Maurice and Kimmy. They are rolling on up to this plot of land and they get out and they're kind of discussing their visions for this land. Well, Kimmy is speaking in terms of where she and Maurice's house will be built. You know, she's thinking that they're going to have a house built on this land. And that's like the total opposite of what Maurice had in mind. Maurice thinks that this would be some good land to put a spec home on. And they were going to get Martel involved as the builder. And Kimmy's like, wait a minute, wait, what? How? And, you know, Uncle Mike was going to draw up the plans and X, Y, Z. This was just going to be this big family affair. And so Kimmy's confused. She's like, OK. You know, when were you going to discuss any of this with me? You just kind of bring me in on the back end. And it's just like, oh, this is your project because. She knows what will happen. She knows that Maurice will have all these plans for this project and they'll all get dumped on her. As with everything that seems to go on between the two of them, we know that over time, and he could have always been this way and we just never realized it, but Maurice, you know, he'll set something up and Kimmy is left to deal with it. Just like the situation where he was supposed to meet with Kiowa and her husband regarding Monster. Um, at first, you know, Kimmy wasn't even a part of it. And then when Kimmy became a part of it, you know, when she was made aware that she's going to be a part of this, Maurice left at the last minute and he didn't even, you know, meet them or greet them to have this discussion. He wasn't there at all. So Kimmy is kind of used to him pulling this and but she's getting frustrated and now she says that there is just like horrible like lack of communication between he and herself like he doesn't you know let her know stuff until the very end and she's just kind of frustrated with it but side note something that really bothered me now I have a nose piercing also and mine it's not like a stud um, where like on the regular earrings where you have like the backing it, you know, they did it with the, the whole needle deal and there's like a hook in the, what do they call these? I guess they, they call them studs. I'm not sure, but there's a hook in it and it's undetectable. Like you can't see it. Like, no matter like what angle I hold my nose, you know, you cannot see the, the gauge or whatnot. But Kimmy, it always looks like she has a booger in her nose. And I always have to remind myself, OK, she has a piercing, but I don't know if it has just turned around to where the gauge is facing outside of her nose or if it's too long or what whatever the case may be. But. I don't like it and I know that production is not shit because they would have told her okay we need to 
fix this, you know, no situation because it on film, it looks like you have a booger in your nose. And we know that's not the case. But I mean, everybody, I'm sure everybody's eyes are just like glued to that nose ring the entire time because it is so distracting. See, I just spent like almost two minutes talking about it. But anyway, in her confessional, you don't see it. So I'm guessing she just decided to not wear it or, or what. But yeah, I was kind of mad about that. But next we see Martel. Martel goes to see his mom or I don't know if they're at her house or at his house. But anyway, they're at a house and they're getting baby girl's hair together. What they call her. I think they call her sugar mama. They're getting her hair together. And Martel mentions, you know, in his confessional that he feels like hair combing is a woman's job. Like a man shouldn't be combing a child's hair. And he here he is with this, I guess, chauvinistic attitude or this um, this sexism or whatever it is. He, um, this macho, you know, we know he brings this just toxic masculinity. He just breeds it. But he says that, you know, she, um, he's going to have to learn. He's a single dad at this point. He has to learn how to do her hair. And it's, he just really put, ooh, he turned me all the way off with that comment. But he sits down with his mom. And he mentions to her the possibility of, you know, seeking counseling with everything that has gone on. He feels like he could stand to talk to somebody because he's not sure if he's dealing with depression or whatnot. We know that seems to be the theme of the past few episodes, the men and whether or not they are depressed. And his mom feeds into this stigma that we have in the black community about you know us not needing to see doctors she's like you don't need to see no doctor um you just working a lot you know you you just you just that's all it is and she just feels like he's probably just overworked at this point and he's got a lot on his plate but it was really disturbing to me how she just immediately dismissed it but again, like I said, we got to understand that in our community, you know, we feel like we're strong people and that we don't need to bring strangers or other people into, you know, the issues that are going on with us. Um, it's stuff that we can fix ourselves. And we've learned, you know, as later generations, as you know, our generations progress, that that's not always the case. And so I was really like angry that she dismissed it. And he, when he was talking to her, he kind of, you know, was like, yeah, you know, he was just going along with what she was saying. But we do see later on that he does indeed go and talk to the, the therapist. But I just was real upset about that. Now, I also noticed that, you know, Mama Holt, her tune has kind of changed um, as the show has progressed. In the beginning, when Mel and Martel were getting a divorce, you know, she was upset. She was heartbroken and she understood Mel's side. I guess since things have come out like the song and them slinging dirt on social media, I, you know, her tune has changed and now she is in agreement with everything that Martel does in, in agreement and you know he can do no wrong and I don't necessarily I mean she's his mom I don't expect for her to feel any different but as a mother we should be able to tell our children when they're right and when they're wrong and she knows because she has told him that what is going on is not right but I guess now she feels like he doesn't have anybody on his side and she needs to ride for him right or wrong. Now, she also tells him that, you know, they, they talk about Mel's song because I guess at this point her song is still um, 
I got me a little bottle of, of, of something here, some Pinot Grigio. Um, I'm not doing the glass tonight because I don't feel like washing dishes. So straight from the little bitty bottle. It's so cute. It's good too. But anyway, you know, they talk about male song. I guess during this point, her um, telltale signs, that song is out. And she says that the son was singing it one day. And she tells him, well, you know that song's about your dad, right? And we know that's a trigger for Martell. We know Martell does not like when somebody brings up this song, especially when his kids are singing it. So he tells his mom that, you know, she's wrong for telling them that. And the mama was like, I'm not wrong for telling them that because it's true. You know, you need to take that up with your wife. If that's, you know, if you got a problem with that, he was singing it. And I told him where the song, you know, the inspiration behind the song and it is what it is. And so Martell kind of did that situation, but he, we know he doesn't want the kids singing it because he feels like they shouldn't know that their dad cheated and made another baby and whatever. But he, to change the subject, he invites his mom to the destiny race that the Scots are having. And she says that, yeah, she'll come. So now is the day of the therapy session. And Martell, they decided to meet at Maurice's office. They're going to meet Dr. Francis there and they're going to have a session there. Now, it was supposed to be Martell, Maurice and Marceau, but they call Marceau and Marceau's like, you know, y'all handle it and just let me know what happens because he's not coming because he feels like he's not even sure if he is depressed and also he if he is he doesn't really want to talk to dr francis about it because he feels that dr francis is always team wife team woman he doesn't really you know take the side of the man but i don't know that that's him just coming up with an excuse as to why he doesn't want to attend the session but anyway um dr francis shows up and Maurice, you know, kicks it off. They start with Maurice. Maurice is telling him that he's not sure if what he's feeling is depression as a result of all this work he's been doing, the constant work. We, we know with him running the credit business and also him now being a lawyer, he is not sure that, you know, if what he's feeling is like him being overworked or if him not achieving or being where he thinks he needs to be thus far, if all of those things are causing him to be depressed. So I guess he just kind of wants Dr. Francis to help him iron out some things and to kind of pinpoint what he's feeling. Now, Dr. Francis, in listening to what Maurice said, he told Maurice that he basically has two wives. You know, he's got Kimmy, his physical wife, and then he's got his job, which is like, a, you know, his metaphoric wife. He, when he's with Kimmy and should be spending time with her, you know, concentrating and focusing on her, you know, at the same time, he's wondering, you know, is my other baby gonna call? You know, is the business gonna call? what he could be doing. He's wondering what's happening with the business and everything like he is cheating, you know, on her. And this is all metaphoric, but he's cheating on her with his work. And eventually it's going to become a problem because she requires time. You know, she wants to take vacations. They want to do stuff together. But he says, you know, he doesn't even go on vacation because he's always working. And I think both him and Marceau, have the same problem. They come from humble beginnings and they talk about how they didn't have anything growing up. Then now, you know, they got a taste of success and they don't want to let it go at any cost. They still want this family life on one end, but on the other end, they also want all the success that comes with entrepreneurship. So that's why, you know, this is 
the two are going to clash. And we see that in Marceau's house also. Letitia is very frustrated because he puts more into work than he does with her and the children. And Kimmy, even though they're newly married or, you know, have been married for less time, she is starting to feel like, okay, I'm kind of coming second to everything else that Maurice has going on. So he's going to have to learn to compromise. He's going to have to learn to balance these two things because Kimmy doesn't seem like she'll stay around forever and take it, but he's going to have to come up with something. Now he advises him to be careful, you know, when he puts so much energy into work that it, you know, it causes that conflict with his wife and children. Like he don't want monster and them resenting him for not being there. And so he really needs to, you know, tread lightly when it comes to, or make better decisions when it comes to, you know, that work life balance. So Martel was there, but all Martel was doing was nodding and, you know, like, yeah, you know, he got a couple of words in and I could tell Dr. Francis really wasn't trying to entertain Martel for the most part because he has spent a lot of time with Martel in the past. And we know that when Martel feels like he's right, he's right. And Martel has a problem with accepting accountability. Maurice was literally like blown away by some of the things Dr. Francis was telling him. And he never looked at it in the way that Dr. Francis explained things. And we know Martel will argue that man down to the ground. And I think Dr. Francis knows that also. So he didn't put as much energy into Martel as he did with Maurice because Maurice, from what he's seen, you know, seems to be a little more receptive to what he's putting down. So that was the end of their little session. Now, it's the day of the destiny race and Marceau is there and he explains the purpose of this race. And basically what they do is every participant writes down their purpose or their destiny or something that they want to obtain, something that they want to work towards. And they stake it into the ground and they run this race. And they run the race and they run towards their destiny. And when they cross the finish line or whatnot, that is supposed to, I guess, mentally put them in a place to obtain that goal, obtain that destiny that they have written for themselves. So I think it's really cute. Now we see, um, Martel, he shows up late. He shows up with his mom. He says that his mom, you know, she tried not to come. She said she wasn't going to come, but I guess he convinced her to come. And so she showed up. I don't know why that hindered him from showing up on time because mama wasn't coming but I guess trying to talk her into coming wasted a lot of time and she did eventually show up now he says that it feels good to be in this environment because he's got his mom there Melody's mom is there along with the kids and Melody all of them being in one space at the same time he says that it's a good feeling. I don't know why, because y'all argue every time y'all get together. But if he says it feels good, then we're going to go ahead and roll with that. Now, I don't, this race was funny. Like you see, first you see Tiffany and Mel walking. And when I say walking, I mean walking. They come round in the bend, you know, they are one of the first people finish and everybody's like, no, nah, no, they didn't beat all of these people who have been running. And here they come, you know, round in the bend coming on in and they're like two of the first to finish. And so Kimmy was like, no, nah, something ain't right. And so everybody's convinced that, yeah, they done cheated. And so Tiffany does tell us, you know, that we didn't cheat you know we put in the same amount of work we just worked a little smarter and that's just cold for yeah we we cut through a, a side street somewhere around around up in there and we got here before everybody else but them two winches got up in there and cheated it, it was hilarious though but the funniest part to me was you see destiny 
coming up on the finish line. She's like a little ways away. And then you see Letitia behind her. Now, Letitia was behind her and she wasn't going to let Destiny beat her. She got to run it. It was just so funny to see, to see the two of them racing to this finish line. I don't know why I got such a, a big kiki out of that, but it was too funny. And Letitia did pass her and finished before her. So I know she felt good to know she finished before somebody. So um, the Scots, they give, you know, the little finishing speech at the end. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And the event was a success. So now we get where they're all in their little group standing around talking. And Tiffany basically wants to know, you know, why Martel and Mel got to arguing at their anniversary event last week at the baseball field. And if, you know, this is going to be a thing every time they get together, are y'all going to argue every time we get together? And so Martel goes to give some cockamamie story and Destiny tries to throw her two cents in and she tries to explain to Martel why they always get into an argument and whatever. And Mama Hope was feeling some kind of way for Destiny coming at her son. So she tells Destiny, you know, to kind of pipe down, you know, you don't need to be in this. You were married to him. What goes on between him and Melody is between him and Melody. It don't got nothing to do with you. And so uh, I guess Destiny referred to her as his bodyguard or something. And she was like, I ain't his bodyguard. I'm his mama. And so she was like, well, his mom, this, his bodyguard. And so Mar Martel was feeling kind of, you know, good that somebody was there standing up for him. And he didn't have a word to say because his mom was there fighting his battles. And the whole time, Melody didn't say a word. Melody knows when to be quiet. And she knew that this was one of those instances where she just needed to hush. So she just sat there and looked. Um, her kids were there too. And I'm sure she didn't want to get to arguing around them and her mama and everybody else. So she, she played it smart. So then we see the ex mother-in-laws, um, Miss Van and Miss Holt, they get together and they hug and say how they need to get together soon because they always get together with the kids. I guess that's their thing. They're still cordial to one another. They don't have any problems. They, you know, what happened with their children is unfortunate, but the two of them try to maintain a relationship, especially since they share grandchildren. And so Miss Wanda walks up and she's speaking to everybody and Mama Holt is not with the mess. So she immediately dismisses herself. She gets out of town. She was like, you know what? I don't do drama. I don't do mess. And she knows that Miss Wanda has mess written all over her forehead, her face, her cheekbones, in there, that French roll that was on top of her head is written everywhere. So she dismissed herself. She excused herself from the conversation, exited stage left and right and got on down. So now it's just Miss Van, who is Melody's mom and Miss Wanda. Now, Miss Wanda goes into talking about how she told Melody that she and Martel need to get back together. And Miss um, Van stops her right there. She was like, hold on, hold on. You know, this is mighty crazy of you to say, considering the stuff that you do and say on social media. You don't seem like you want them to reconcile. And plus, they're grown and that's their decision. Um, nobody can tell them what they need to do. And so they start arguing and... Miss Wanda asked her, you know, well, have you ever cheated before? And so Miss Van was, she was offended. She was highly offended by that and was like, you know, no, I've never cheated before. And who are you to ask me something like that? She was like, see, you need to go away from me with this ghetto mess. Like, and so when she said ghetto, that's, that seemed to have set Miss Wanda off. Miss Wanda was in the confessional threatening to take her wig off, her earrings and shoes and lay hands on the woman. And so they get to bickering back and forth, back and forth. And so it's to the point where the daughters have to step in now. So Letitia and Melody both come and they're trying to calm their moms down because Miss Wanda is getting turned up. She's ready to go. And 
you got Miss Van who's not backing down either. So the two of them are kind of going back and forth with one another. And she tells, Miss Wanda tells um, Letitia, well, she hears Miss Van say, you know, she is being extremely ghetto and I'm not with this. And so that triggers Letitia also because we know the whole ordeal that the problem that Letitia had with Marceau referring to her as being from the other side of the tracks. She does not like when people refer to her in that less than or condescending kind of, you know, description because she just because she grew up in Bessemer, Alabama. I've never been to Bessemer and I don't know what it's like, but she makes it seem like it's just such a bad place. And she gets offended when people throw her upbringing up in her face. I mean, you're not there anymore. You're very successful. You are, you know, um, you're smart. You have degrees, multiple degrees, and you have built a life for yourself. You have a husband, you have children, you are esteemed, you know, I mean, you, you have come a long way and it just seems like she gets so, so in her feelings when somebody says something and she feels like they're talking down on her. So she pulls her mom to the side and she's telling her mom, you know, you cannot threaten to put hands on people because her mama was like, I'm going to put, you know, I was about to slap her. I'm about to put hands on her. She kept saying it. And so Letitia was like, mom, you cannot put hands on people. You cannot, you can't. And so she was like, and I know, you know, you said that, you know, the same with Kimmy, you know, I, I know you said Kimmy told you to shut the F up at the event and you got, you know, angry, but I can handle them. I don't need you handling them in that way, especially not with putting hands on people. And so Ms. Wanda said that, you know, well, as, as far as Kimmy goes, Kimmy got real disrespect for at that event. And if she does it again, she will put hands on her. So now Ms. Wanda is talking like she's ready to fight at this point. We know Letitia and she tells us that there's no change in her that ain't nothing nobody can say it's going to change who she is she is who she is and she's going to say what she want to say and trust me i know i have a miss wanda in my life i i when i tell you i have a miss wanda i have one and they're going to say what they want to say is is no change in them the only thing that you can control at this point is what Letitia has decided to do. And that's not invite her mom to, you know, events. You know, she gonna have to hold off for a while. Let Miss Wanda kind of cool off over there because she did notice that things do tend to run a lot smoother when Miss Wanda is not around to stir a mess. And so that's where the episode ended. Uh, I gave y'all a play by play about the whole episode. If there's anything that y'all want to discuss, anything that I might have left out that you want to talk about we can go ahead and do it in the comments below y'all always know i do respond we we gonna talk about it but if you made it this far again i do thank you for taking the time out to hang out with me this evening for this recap and i will see you all if not tomorrow for potomac i will most certainly see you monday and if I see you Monday, I'm going to see you for two videos. I'm going to see you for Housewives of Potomac and Insecure. Insecure will be done most certainly on Monday, but Housewives of Potomac, I may do it tomorrow. But with tomorrow being Halloween, I'm not really sure, but we'll figure it out. But with that being said, y'all have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.